So I'll probably always distro hop as part part of the fun quest of, you know, finding that distro that seems to fit for the time being. As many of you know, if you follow this channel or if you're just starting to follow this channel, thank you for doing so. But for the for the uh, many of you who've followed this channel for years, you know I am a habitual distro hopper and will continue to do so. Now, it comes to my pleasant surprise that in my experimentation with the latest KDE Plasma 518, I uh, tried it on Kubuntu, of course, KDE Neon, which is one of my top favorite distros, even though they don't even call it a distro. For me, it's a distro. Uh, I'm loving it. Uh, but with that recent update, there are some bugs. There's a few bugs. One of the big nagging bugs is the inability to apply the font settings once you get in. And KD Neon needs a little tweaking. I mean, the fonts are good, but to really get them crisp, at least for my monitor, um, it takes some tweaking. Well, without that fix being applied yet, it's coming up in 5.18.1. Uh, I believe in two days from this video recording, I was kind of looking at alternatives, which brought me back to OpenSUSE, primarily OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, because with Tumbleweed, it's a rolling release and you're going to get frequent updates. It's pretty much bleeding edge. So I had that installed on one of my laptops, one of my test systems, and I noticed several things. First of all, the install process, and it's been a while for me, but the install process seems to have been improved. It was very smooth and very fast. The other thing that I kind of noticed or picked up on, and this is just observation. This isn't, I mean, you're, you're uh, listening to a guy right now who has used a ton of different operating systems and distros, and I use it on the same really three or four main pieces of hardware, being my main system, two laptops, um, just a standby system. And I say all of that to let you know that my experience, once I got everything set up, seemed to be uh, that OpenSUSE Tumbleweed seems to run a little bit faster on the same hardware that I've been running Kubuntu and KDE Neon on, which are both Ubuntu-based uh, operating systems. Now, I haven't run tests. I'm just telling you my observation so you can take it or leave it there. But the other thing that I discovered getting in and setting things up and tweaking was that for whatever reason, uh, the font setting applies just fine within OpenSUSE Tumbleweed with the latest 518 in KDE Plasma. I've found no other issues or bugs to report. So I'm not sure what the folks over at OpenSUSE are doing on the Tumbleweed side that's different from KDE Neon or Kubuntu for that, for that matter. Uh, but whatever it is, it's working. Also, I found out that uh, the font rendering in OpenSUSE is actually better than on KDE Neon out of the box. And upon doing some reading through the Reddit forums and things like that, it seems like that's one of the things that the devs have um, focused in on. And it's paid off because I did install the Ubuntu fonts and apply those with a few changes and really they look as good as Linux Mint, which is really saying something. In my opinion, on my system, on my monitor, Linux Mint, as far as font rendering, looks better than any other distro, with the exception of maybe, uh, you know, when you just install Ubuntu default with, with the GNOME desktop, it's, you know, it's font rendering is very good as well, but I'm going to give Linux Mint the edge there in font rendering. Well, able to get, happy to report, able to get font rendering to look just as good as Linux Mint on a KDE desktop system. And that's something that's kind of difficult to achieve. Great for that. I mean, you know, let's face it, fonts are something you're looking at every day. I'm talking about fonts within the browser, within documents, within your file explorer. It hurts your eyes if they're not set up properly. So that's excellent. All right. So that was all on my laptop. So what did I do? I went ahead and switched over to OpenSUSE Tumbleweed on my main system. I wiped KDE Neon, started from scratch. I've got everything set up. I'm going into day two on my main system. And so far I'm happy to report uh, it's been fantastic. So I'm gonna keep it on here. Uh, the screen just went blank here. I'm gonna keep it on here for, um, well, we'll see. I'm not gonna give any time limits. We'll just see. 
But right now, very excited to have this set up and running because in the past, and maybe it's because I went with Leap, um, I had some issues. Now, I haven't done a major update, but I want to pop over here. And this brings me to one other point. So we're going to go into Discover. And right now with Discover, there are a lot of updates. And one of the things that I read is that within Discover, you can now apply the update safely within OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and not through YAST or through Zipper. And that the updates will apply fine and not break the system. Now, okay, so it's taken a while for this to fetch. Uh, but trust me, there are a lot of updates sitting there within Discover. I'm going to do a little more research to make sure before I apply the updates through Discover uh, to make sure that maybe I'm not taking a huge risk. There are some other things to kind of talk about, and I'll save that for later videos because I want to get in and kind of do some more testing and everything. For those of you who follow the channel, you know that 99% of the time, probably 99.9% .9 of the time, if I'm talking about a distro, it's something that I have installed on a system. I rarely, rarely ever uh, set up and run through, um, you know, a virtual environment or anything like that. I try to keep things as real as possible. Now, one of the things that I try to do with my systems is stay all Intel uh, with anything that I purchase. I'm not the gamer that I once was, so the, the gaming that I do today, it's, uh, it's easy with built-in Intel graphics. But that's one of the things that allows me to distro hop without a lot of pain and aggravation. The other thing I just want to point out to you, well, there's a couple more things to point out here in this video, which is YAST. Uh, and YAST is just full of system tools. It gives you the ability to set up everything from uh, printers to Samba to networks, firewall, on and on and on and on. Um, you can get into bootloader uh, settings, network settings. They also have their own font settings, which I think is one of the reasons why, for whatever reason, in 5.18 on Neon and Kubuntu, you couldn't apply, but here you can. Maybe it has something to do with that. You have really three or four easy ways to access software. So you've got software management through YAST. Um, and then you can update that with the zipper command. I will save that for another video because there's some things about how to update within Tumbleweed that can vary your success. But here it's just global search. You can set up various repositories, including uh, Snap. So, um, so you've got Snap here through YAST, and then you've got some other reposit repositories that we'll talk about again in another video. And then within Discover, uh, we'll bounce back to that. Now you see all the updates here. So again, <laughs> I got to make sure I'm not breaking anything because I've really got the system set with everything. And so that would, that would be a bummer. Uh, let's go back to applications here. And you do have, actually, let's go into settings. You do have FlatHub available within Discover. I want to say a couple of other things about OpenSUSE is that I went ahead and, uh, you know, with Tumbleweed, went ahead with the full 4 gig uh, install. So it loaded up kind of everything. This is kind of a heavy install. It's, you know, that's a big difference between this and Neon, which Neon is completely stripped down and, and you kind of add what you want. And I think that's the appeal to Neon for me and I know many others. Uh, however, one little addition here, and I'll just go ahead and point this out is let's go in here to games, for example, so you'll see some games added. Uh, at right click, you can uninstall right from the app. Now you can also go into Discover or go into Yast and uninstall as well, but it's just kind of nice to have a quick uninstall. And what that's going to do is, is launch you right into, actually, that took us right back into Discover. Let's see what pops up here. Yeah, so it's going to pull you right back up. Okay, that's weird. But anyway, uh, from there, it'll pull you into Discover to uninstall that app, which is reminiscent of Linux Mint. It's just one of those things that make this OS different uh, within KDE, still same desktop, but, but it's something that's been added within the OS to make it a little different and a little more convenient, in my opinion. The other thing I want to point out to you here towards the end of this particular video, and there'll be more, is you can also experiment with... 
OpenSUSE through what's called Gecko Linux. Now, I haven't tried Gecko Linux in some time. I don't know how recently it has been updated, but with Gecko Linux, you can get a multitude of desktops that aren't really available in the, in the defaults with OpenSUSE. So with OpenSUSE, you're going to find uh, the GNOME desktop, XFCE, and KDE Plasma. So those would be your three choices upon install from the full install CD. Gecko Linux, on the other hand, they do offer a rolling release as well as their static release, but they offer a multitude of desktops not available. The install ISO is also much smaller. Some of the things are stripped out. The other big plus is that the uh, media codecs and things like that are pre-installed. It used to be that the font rendering was a little better as well, but I think now that whatever uh, magic was put in place with the most recent tumbleweed, you know, it's not, it's kind of a wash. Again, was able to get the fonts to just look to me outstanding on my monitor on my system. Uh, so your mileage may vary there. That's why I say that. So, well, there's going to be a lot to discuss. I'll save it for other videos. If you're someone uh, that's been following along with Plasma development, which has been at a fast pace recently, you're going to have some updates in about two days that should fix a ton of the a ton of the bugs, which I didn't see all the bugs that were listed. There are apparently quite a few bugs within 5.18. The big one for me was being able to apply the settings to the fonts. So in two days, those fixes will come into play. You'll have 5.18.1. So it's been a long time since I've run OpenSUSE to have that feeling of at install that, wow, this feels right. This is really working well in the system and things have really come together. So it's a combination of things. I need more time to really get into more details about why I'm kind of excited about this. And part of this for me is uh, OpenSUSE is one of those tried and true distros. It, it's on the commercial side. There's a big force behind uh, SUSE development and OpenSUSE. And um, it, it shows in Yast. When you get into Yast and you start looking at things uh, in detail, I mean, just you go into system settings, system information through Yast, and the amount of information that you can pull in there compared to other distros, other operating systems, uh, that's where you start to see some of the difference. That's just one little small minute uh, area where you see it. All right, so where I'm getting with this is I've got some nostalgia for OpenSUSE. It was one of those distros that I would go buy a, a computer magazine to get the disk so that I could try to install it and get all the drivers working. And I remember that it was, for whatever reason, I don't remember exactly why, but it was the one distro that seems like back, I mean, I'm talking about when it was available back in the, in the early 2000s. It was one of those that I just never could conquer. And so it was always like that alluring thing. I wanted to make it work, but couldn't. And today, it seems to be working just great. So it's kind of nostalgia, kind of like that thing you've always wanted to achieve, but couldn't really ever nail it down. It feels nailed down now. So time will tell. I could be doing another video in a week saying, gosh, guys, don't install tumble, tumbleweed because the updates will kill you, that kind of thing. But I don't think so. I don't think so this time. So, uh, all right, rambled on enough, excited about it, as you can probably tell. If you, like me, had issues with Plasma 518 and you're definitely a KDE fan tried and true through and through and that's going to be your desktop of choice, right now my suggestion would be go ahead and give uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed a try. All right, we'll wrap it up from there. As always, thanks for watching.